the personality, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, who gave Allah Taala gave his example to us and his leadership to us and such ibadat and knowledge that Allah Taala has given salah, hajj, zakah, fasting and all tasbihat and duas that we've been given and we've been given wazifas and lessons and afkar and kitabs and days and nights and months that we've been given and beautiful holy days and nights and events that come up and on top of this this person is asking, he knows that the Prophet ﷺ is present physically and what more khair could there be than what they've already got? Can there be more khair than everything we've already got? He could have thought. So Allah's Nabi ﷺ gave a beautiful answer to this and very lofty, you can say, answer. Very thoughtful answer. And in a nice, short way, Nabi ﷺ said, al khuluqul hasan that the human being, the best thing and the greatest thing that Allah Ta'ala has given is akhlaqi husana. Akhlaqi husana. So in other words, all ibadat, the greatest and the best thing is what? Akhlaqi husana. The, the good conduct and behavior. It doesn't matter how much you pray and you are hajji and you worship. Elevates a person so much so that all of his ibadat, his worship are accepted for this reason. And this same akhlaq, conduct, is such a set of stairs or a ladder that if you start ascending this, you can attain Allah Ta'ala's ma'rifah and nearness. And if we don't have this, you can't get to Allah. This is the ladder. A person doesn't get close to Allah due to ibadat, worship. It's due to akhlaq. All of the awliya Allah who came to this world or who will keep on coming. How did they become awliya Allah? When they had akhlaq, husna, akhlaq within them. Now, akhlaq, good manners, good behavior, conduct, this is the high and final stage of tafsiya qalb, tazkiya qalb. The, for example, we're sitting and we're doing tazkiya, isn't it? For purification. And where are we doing purification? On the heart. We are here for the game of purifying the heart, aren't we? This is the game. What are the game is there? That you come behind me and I come after you, etc. And we push each other and help each other, assist each other. That this flesh... Of the heart, we want to purify it, clean it. This is our objective and we're trying and making effort. And we should do this and this is our objective. And what are we doing? We're trying to purify the heart and we've got water to purify the heart. And what is that water? Say it loudly. What is it? No, I can't hear, understand what you're saying. Say it louder. Dhikr Allah. That's right. So this is the cleaning agent. The Allah, the Allah has given. And the person who hasn't started this, then write it down. These are in gold. His heart can never be clean. Never. These are words you can inscribe in gold. If you do not put the clothes into the machine, if you don't wash them, they cannot be clean. Doesn't matter how much you try, 10 years, you can stand next to the machine and put the washing powder on top of the machine and the clothes next to the machine and put everything there. After 10 years, the, they will be even more dirty of the clothes. They won't be clean. But alhamdulillah, you put the clothes into the machine after 5 minutes, 10 minutes, the clothes will come out clean and pure and fragrant in the same way the heart. All your life long, you can try your best. Try your best all your life long. Make efforts here and there. But... If you don't take the tasbih into your hand and do dhikr, Allah, Allah, the heart cannot be cleaned. And as soon as we sit and we rotate the tasbih, utilize the tasbih, then the heart will be clean. Just like you put the clothes, dirty linen into the washing machine to, close, uh, to clean them. And what is the powder, the washing agent that we use? Ismizat, Allah's name. And then you start to use the tasbih. This was why I, was, why I came to the earth. I came to the earth to teach and spread good akhlaq. This was the objective. The reason why I didn't come here to teach you prayer and sujood and prostration. I came to educate you on one subject, which is akhlaq. Excellent conduct and manners and behavior. And we see this. We see this. That where Rasulullah came, he lived amongst the Arabs to fulfill the rights of the people. This is the high level conduct and manners and behavior. To fulfill the rights of society. And the person who learns this, that how do I fulfill the rights of people around me? He has the highest grade of conduct and manners and behavior. Good social skills. So where was this in the Arab world at that time? When Rasulullah Wasallam, they didn't know about how to give meat other rights. They didn't know about their wife or their children. They used to bury their daughters alive. When our master, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came, my master, and he came, the same people there, when they used to bury their daughters alive, their daughters used to be screaming, they were half buried in the earth, and their heads were sticking out, their bodies. These were the people, they thought that they were high in status. 
So when the true akhlaq came, and when the people who just grinned and smiled, and how did they change those same people that I said to you before? That those same people who would bury their children alive, how did they make their akhlaq? They were so cautious that even an ant shouldn't be buried under my footsteps, because the ant has a haq and a right. The ant has the right. The animal has the right. The human being is human being. Even the pigeons have rights. The donkey has a right. Every animal has a right that has to be fulfilled. And this is called haq. Haq. And the person who understands the haq for people and society, he is the highest grade manners. And what is the important? That where there are no haqquq, and those societies who forget the haqquq for each other, then what is the opposite? That fasad comes, fitna comes. And never in the Islamic society was there for seven fitna. If you look at the conduct, if your heart feels you want to help someone, but you can't fulfill the need or the requirement of somebody else, then it's stated that upon this special character, Allah Ta'ala says, give two rewards, that I will free you from hellfire, and I will free your heart from hypocrisy. Because you have the desire, you want to free people from their difficulties. Now do you have this in the, do we have this in our country? We have madrasas and masjids and Quran and tafsir. Creature, not just a mu'min and no'min, human beings. Even doesn't matter if it's a Muslim, non-Muslim, non-believer, doesn't matter. We cannot differentiate. We have to distribute the rights to every human being in the world. And the creatures and the animals. You cannot do dhulam against anyone in society. Nobody. There's no differentiation now. He's a non-Muslim. Hit him or kill him or steal from him or take his money. Astaghfirullah. He's not a believer. Subhanallah. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, First I will do his sab. That how did you pester these people who are not even Muslims? First you'll be asked about that action. Allah's Nabi Sallallahu said, I will be the witness myself. Allah Akbar, I will be standing as myself the witness. That what game are you playing? What game are you playing? And imagine that such a severe law has been revealed to us. So what a question was asked by this Sahabi, subhanAllah. Imagine how beautiful is this hadith. 